Hello everybody, hope you are having a great evening or any time of the day wherever you are. Um, today we are hoping to look into some cool Magnus games. I am just waiting to confirm that I am on YouTube and I haven't accidentally um, started streaming somewhere else. Okay, I think we are on YouTube and let's see, what else? What else is new? Yeah, so we're gonna look at some Magnus games and uh, per usual we are gonna do the switch to Twitch in about an hour and just flip it, see your games, see if you can play as good as Magnus. There's There are some really really cool Magnus games but I wanted to uh, kind of look into something that potentially we haven't really I mean, it's not that famous, because last week we looked at the Anon Magnus match, and that's pretty famous, so my hopes for this week's game is so that no one knows it, so everything's pretty fresh. Um, but the truth of it behind it is um, two different things. Number one, um, wanna, this is a game that I included in the book that I wrote with my brother, which will be out uh, by end of summer. But the other part of it is that one of my kids asked me about if I ever played this as black and I was like, I've actually never ever played this as black. So I started looking into um, this opening just a little bit and I saw, oh, Magnus had a cool game and that we included this in the, in the book. So um, that's the reasoning behind why I'm showing you this game. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Var. It's very sweet of him. Did you guys know he's my team coach? Yeah, I haven't had the chance to work with him often this semester because I'm um, <laughs> MCAT's pain. But um, yeah, he's he's one of the coaches. It's him and Alejandro. My two musketeers? Maybe the third one. Make it a three musketeer. Pishi is sunbathing. It is extremely warm and humid in St. Louis, so Pishi is not really having it. He goes out, he meows, he comes back, like, he meows at me like, why is the weather like this? Alright, yeah, everybody loves war. Who doesn't love war? Alright, um, okay, so, uh, unfortunately, I do show the name, because I, wa I wanted to initially be like, maybe I should make you guys guess who played it, but if you want, you can guess which tournament was this. Uh, it wasn't like a super, well actually it was a strong tournament, but not one of the super tournaments. Alright, so, yeah, this was a very, very cool game, and Magnus kind of just crushed this poor uh, Suri. I actually think I know this guy, um, it's been years, but I, he, I believe he is Indian, and he was a um, grandmaster a few years older than me. But I remember I always saw him in like the, the World Juniors or like Asian Championships. Nope, not Reykjavik. Yeah. Alright, so. Uh, obviously take is the main logical move. And as you can also guess from the title of the today's show, it's gonna be a bunch of sacrifices. And <laughs> um, so, first question. Who, who likes knight f6? Who wants to take? Those are your two logical options. Let's go with that. And yeah, that's June was also kind of a... Uh, I had this idea that in the month June, I'm gonna just talk about Magnus and Chess and Psychology. Because he has so many cool games and um, I want to kind of have like a tiny video series on him. Um, so we've done few before and we're gonna try and do the June... June month of Magnus, and the fun part is June in Farsi, like the word June means deer. Uh, I guess it could, like, if you make it sound, it could also be delicious. These games are very sacrificial, so, but <laughs> no, mainly it's like um, deer, blah blah. So June can be that. Yeah, different June, yeah. And so in the thumbnail, I started texting Ben Simon, the producer, like, hey, can we have this? word June in um, in the thumbnails in the picture and he was like sure let's see how that works and I think it works kind of nice uh, maybe next time we can have fireballs throwing it <laughs> yeah 
Oh, C6? I've actually never really encountered this. Um, I mean, I understand the logic behind it. You want to get your pieces out quickly. But I, I, I mean, I don't think C6 is a very like high level um, chess. Varism. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, so I like this knight f6 idea. Uh, I think queen d5 is also, I mean, very logical. It's, there's nothing wrong with taking. Especially since um, something like you just, like, there's so, I mean, not queen d6, I know. Nah. Oh, queen d6. There's so many different ways of playing it, and I think it's just a mm, good idea. But uh, knight f6 is much sharper. And so after knight f6, this d4 idea is the best one. Uh, for those of you who have played against me, um, you probably do know that I've played this bishop b5 line a lot. And I think it's a cool idea to play in like shorter time control. So if you are interested in this bishop b5 idea, I strongly suggest you give it a try. It's definitely worth it. But if you are more uh <laughs> yeah thank you thank you i i did not catch wars stream sorry i was trying to clean up a little around but yeah i tried to make the wall all white backgrounds because i usually have stuff on my background but yeah if you look at this other wall i have physics equations here and if you look at a little farther down the road i have uh biochemistry stuff so um not it's not, this was kind of the only white spot on the house <laughs> that I haven't filled up with papers on the walls. Yeah. Ah, I'll be free end of the month of this torturous exam. Um, let's see. All right, so yeah, this bishop b5 I think is quite a nice idea. Yo, Asan, I did see that the, the um, Insta DM, I'll look into it more, but until end of June, I am a zombie. Like a literal zombie. I'm trying to wake up every day 5 a.m. So far, I've managed to make it to 7 a.m. Well, I guess we'll increase the stamina. <laughs> Alright, so I'm a big fan of Bishop b5. I strongly recommend you look into the theory of it. I think it's interesting. It doesn't really grant you like a cool uh, advantage, but if your opponent is caught off guard, you're gonna at least end up with time advantage. So definitely look into it. However, um, Magnus's opponent kind of trusted his um, opening knowledge and he just went for d4, main line. You're already giving up the extra pawn back. But you get to continue developing. C4 is doable, but I'm not really, I'm not a big fan of it. Neither is my brother. Um, yeah. So I like the, we both like this D4 idea. And uh, there is this thing um, with, I'm not a big fan of, but I guess C6 is also a recommendation. But that's not my, what Magnus went for. He simply went for Bishop G4, which is already a little, um, clever than usual so uh one thing that i wanted to mention oh yeah taking is definitely doable too but uh, it, it could be followed by either c4 and then boom you bring the knights out quickly or just simply bring this knight out easy development and then eventually you're gonna do this c4 so uh it's just a matter of time Oh yeah, I like this. I I, I want to do more Magnus videos. Hopefully, the like I want to try to see how this works. If how the viewers like it, because if you guys like it, then we could just kind of um, have mini video series on uh, different uh, cool chess players. So I'm I'm testing the waters with Magnus. If it goes well, July we can have Nepo or I've done a few videos on Fabi, so we'll see. Alright, okay. Uh, Rahul, that is not an Arabic word, that is a Persian word. The alphabet is very similar, so I understand the confusion. Alright, so, we're still in the opening phases. I don't think this is a super popular opening, unless you play this. Um, so, it's understandable if most of us are not very comfortable with what's going on here. So, another tiny pause. Why to move? What should white do? You have few choices. Move the queen, try to exchange the bishop, just ignore it, get the knight out, or go for something like f3. 
And I can already feel like as soon as I said F3, everybody went, what? Because um, that's what... <laughs> that's the usual response that I get whenever I mention the word F3. F3 is so underappreciated. <laughs> exactly. See, never play F3. Ah, no life. Thank you. I actually did, um, when I started teaching, I was more comfortable talking about my games at the beginning. So I did talk about a lot of my own games. So there is kind of a video series out there like that. And then I did like opening series. And then after that, I started doing more classics mixed with opening. So definitely, yeah, it's usually easier to talk about the games that you played personally. <laughs> yeah, basically. I guess Ben Feingold just had a mini twitch when I said F3. So, any any votes? Anybody wants F3? I know, I know how this looks. I know F3 is not the one that you want, but sometimes you just gotta settle. Is F3 it though? I think yes, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, knight e2 is another possibility. You can just bring out the knight and then continue by like getting the other knight up. But it's a little passive, so I'm not really recommending this. Uh, bishop exchange is also not very uh, recommended either, especially because if we end up in this type of positions, you kind of are forced to do this like knight f3 and then let's say like pawn push and like c4 it's doable but you shouldn't exactly do that uh oh i uh oh i started a tiny uh wound somewhere all right so f3 it is bishop got a move and oh my god i'm sorry i forgot to mention at the end of the line that i just talked about if we played with knight, bishop e2, take, if we take with queen or knight, eventually black is gonna long cast though. I forgot about that part. I am so sorry. I didn't want to mention that. Yeah. And, yep, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so f3, bishop got a move, and now what? Are we gonna chase this bishop, or is that too crazy? I kinda actually like the chase. Magnus didn't do the chase yet. But definitely something that is being considered. I think g4 is cool, but what else? What else do we have? Do we need to do... Well, let me throw in a move in there. Do we want to play something like c4? Defending the pawn. Uh, Tyler, that is not Arabic, that is Farsi, because I'm Persian, so I kind of wanted to have a Persian word in there, and also the word June, because uh, June in Farsi means deer, but it's also the month June, so I tried to do the tiny wordplay in there, because why not? Wordplays are fun. So that's the thing. At this point, I think the development sh um, idea is sh that that ship sailed a little bit. So, what else do we have handy? I like C4 too, right? C4 just kind of feels natural. Okay, maybe it's not natural, but definitely pretty cool. Oh, thank you, Tyler. You too. I like C4. Let's do it. Magnus did the c4 as well. After c4, uh, black simply went for e6. Black still pawn down, so pawn down. So you are kind of probably just simply trying to develop. Nothing wrong with development, right? Development is our best friend.
So. Um, now that the other question is, shall we take? Oh, squirrels. Should we get the knight out? Should we push over here? You have a bunch of options. And what do you think white should do now? So Magnus is still pushing, but what do you think is going on? Maybe still pushing is not the right word. He's trying to create holes in black's position uh, in white's position. So this e6 is another cool thing. Why not bring out the bishop first? We we do we do want to bring out the bishop. Um, oh, you're probably maybe bishop g5. It's doable if bishop g5. We'll probably just took bishop e7. So what do we think about take? Knight c3 is also pretty cool, but we can definitely take that, eat the pawn back, and if you play g4, now I'll just bring my bishop back, you push, I'll just move the knight, you take, and I'll just bring this guy out too. White is up a pawn, uh, but that is not exactly, I mean, the position is not very pleasant. Yeah. So, what about the take over here, d take c6? So let's say take, now what do we do? We have options, we gotta take it back, or we can, you know, just ignore it and develop. Magnus is black, yes. Too many pawn moves. Ooh, queen e7. It's interesting, but there would be a bishop d3 potentially, or just a knight c3. Well, I mean, white would just develop. So, what do you think Magnus should do here? Necessarily like having to play king f7, so I completely understand wanting to simply take it back. However, if you simply take it back, it's too plain. Something like knight e2 is possible, knight c3 is possible, and it can be simply followed by like development in the king's uh, in the queen side, and then you're gonna get a chance to start thinking of what to do in the king side as well. I think this is fine, it's okay, there's nothing wrong with it, but think of something more spicy. Anything more spicy. Bishop e6 is not spicy at all. You just like, you know, guess the knight out. You already moved the bishop here and then you came back and then you came back. Ah! Uh uh. Ooh, spicy. Knight c6. Yeah, nice. Now that we got some spice in here, take. Okay, we gotta take it back. And Magnus is not really scared of leaving this king on f7. So, where does that leave us?
idea, yeah. So white's gotta develop, right? So eventually, like black wants to do this check, bring the rook and enjoy the game. But um, white kind of messed it up. I mean, sorry, not that messed up. There is a little white's development is really messed up. So in order for white to be able to actually um, develop, white's gotta start closing up the king pretty fast. In the game, uh, Suri played bishop e3, which was a mistake. How knight e2 would have been much better. And after knight e2, we could simply... What do you guys think we could do? Knight e2 is uh, white's best move. Why do I keep mess mixing up who's white, who's black? Yep, knight b4. You guys got it. Good job. Knight g3, and then we could do this check. King moves, and we could easily eat this pawn. Yeah, black's still doing pretty fine. If you try to be all cute, like, it's fine. I'll just take back. Now there's another check coming up. Even if the queens are exchanged, that's perfectly fine. Black is still, like, plus two. Yeah. So... Uh, in the game, um, he played bishop e3. Now what do you think we should do after this bishop e3? Bishop e3 is already kind of getting a little messy. Yeah, that was a good question. 92, first of all, uh, protects the potential rookie 8 checks. Second of all, uh, it's, it itself is protected. Third of all, it's defending over here. Um, so I like this idea of just getting my pieces out quickly. So how can we get pieces out quickly? What do you guys think? Is it time to get out the bishop? get it out and white's gonna have a bunch of troubles after here because um, you cannot exactly play this bishop d2 if you play bishop d2 I'll simply take over here and if you take there that's a nice check and bye bye queen you can't exactly do king e2 either because uh, there I can easily just check here or I can even check with queen and then go over here. That should be checkmate soon. All right, yeah. If then you you lose your queen that way. So bishop d2 is not the way to go. How about knight c3? What would we do in knight c3? Basically, R.I.P. Queen. I don't know if I should read that as rip or R.I.P. Yep, let's bring out the rook. Now this is guy is under attack. You come up here, now this guy is dropping. I could take it with the knight too, but I think this is just much more pleasant because I'll just eat stuff for free. I like free stuff. There we go. Oh, this should be very pleasant stuff coming up. Even if knight e2, I could just exchange over here and all these babes are about to become snacks. Nice, 
Mania. Cool. Who is the boys? Alright, so that's how this is gonna go down. Now after bishop b4, white's only kinda left with king f2. So now after king f2, now what happens? Now what happens? What do you think we should do here? First of all, I forgot that I had T, so I gotta do that. Yep, that's called T. Like that T gotta go. I'll reload on my T over break. Oh, there are no real restrictions there, so I mean, you can just go for the tournaments? Ah, cool! I thought they weren't really allowing spectators. Yeah, because I know that they're still figuring out the details on spectators on bigger tournaments, because obviously everybody wants to go, but obviously nobody wants to, you know, be unsafe. But so they're still figuring a lot of stuff out. So, ah, I didn't know they were doing so spectators. That's so cool. Yeah, so let's get the pieces involved. Rook e8 gotta come out. We were already discussing this. And rook e8, move... Um, yeah. Now, what do you think knight what should do? Probably gotta get the knight out, right? Now, this already is a little, like, smelly. Oh, that reminds me of the smelly cat song from friends. Yeah, so <laughs> this position is a little smelly. What do you think is going to go on now? Okay, that's cool. At least you can watch. Yeah. So what does this position smell of? That's kind of the bigger question. Is bishop c2 a move? Uh, I mean, maybe, but... Well, if you want to do rook e3, why don't you just do it now? Exactly, yeah. That's what the position stinks of. Sacrificial stuff. So the smell of sacrifice, now what do we do? Good stuff, right? Let me just go back a little bit. Just one move to give you guys another second to get the feel on the position. So how's the feel? Feeling good on it? Does Ricky Tree make everybody happy? Because it does make me very happy. It would be good if I also had tea, but yeah. So that's the good stuff. Let's take this bad boy over here and bam. And as my brother also confirmed the bam. Yeah, so we got this BAM, <laughs> and uh, Carlson finds this cool idea, of course, and then there is a bunch of more sacrifices to come, as the title has it, Sacrificial Magnus, let's go. And so, well, I mean, you kind of got to take it back, but this is already lost. See, this F3 is already kind of giving white the creeps, and now what do we do? Where is the next sacrifice? I kind of liked the bishop c2 idea, but I don't know if I would have done it in the game because there are other sacrificial ideas too. So I'm going to give you guys a minute. Uh, instead of giving me a one, one move, if you can give me like 
uh, at least like a tree mover like I do this you do that I do this you do that then I do that I think that would make me much happier G4, I mean, I feel like that's something that will sure, surely come up, but right now, So I like knight d4, I think knight g4 is something that could potentially be interesting, I kind of like queen e2, queen e7, what about this bishop c2, maybe let's talk about this bishop c2 another second. Is this bishop c2 feeling good for anybody? I, de I mean, to be fair, bishop c2 is not the move that Magnus played in the game, but it is very, very interesting. I do think it's actually the strongest, um, strongest idea. If bishop c2, now let's say uh, queen d2, then we could do this super duper knight g4. This is a computer line. I'm not coming up with these on spot, just to clarify. So. Now what? What will happen next? Probably gotta take it, right? Okay, what after take? What changed in the position? What piece can we include now? Oh yeah, let's get, oops, sorry. Oh yeah, let's get the queen going. King moves, boom. King moves and you lose the queen. Awesome, and this should be checkmate soon enough. All right, so let's say you don't take it. You play king e2, then what do we do? definitely interesting but why let's just get the queen in involved now your king has nowhere to go and that's the beauty of it you gotta bring this knight and I'll just eat your queen voila what about this weird move of king f4 what then What do we do now? Any cool checks? Any piece that's not working? Honestly, I kind of want queen f6, but as cool as that might look, we have a better idea. What else to do? Yep, let's do this bishop d6. Now king takes over here, and now what? This is, again, this is a very cool winning move. Um, to be fair, queen d7 does hold considerable advantage, but you have something much stronger. What is that something much stronger that you have?
Ooh, h5. Ah, uh, I think h5. Mm, the king kind of runs, and you're a little checklist because, like, if he can play g4 and run with the king, you're gonna have issues. You're like running out of pieces. Yep, bishop f5. Now, if you take it, well, let's talk about king h5 first. King h5 is checkmate in two moves. Can you tell me what's king h5? Yep, you got it. Checkmate is there. And if you just take it, whoops, and if you just take it, checkmate in three moves. You could also, to be fair, do h5 to take this away, and that should be checkmate too. But now, where is your checkmate? Almost there. Starting with g6, not exactly ideal, because uh, you can try to run away. So, what now? So we said he wants to run away, so how do we stop that? Exactly, thank you, queen h4. And then we're gonna continue with g6, bring the rook, and where is the checkmate? This is a very, very cool checkmate. I know you guys can find it. Just, where is my checkmate? Yep, you guys got it. Awesome. Night before, voila. Perfect. So that's why this bishop c2 line would be so weirdly cool, but we kind of missed it. Oh, well, we found it, right? Magnus missed it. <laughs> he went for another super cool sacrifice of knight d4. Again, queen e7 would have been playable as well, but knight d4 is pretty cool, right? Now, can you first of all tell me what is wrong with take? Ah, oh, thank you, Rekha. Yeah, then check, king moves, and then bishop c5. Yep, you got it. Thank you for answering my question before I fully asked it. Alright, lovely. And if king goes to uh, d2, we have rook d8. That wins the queen as well. And as Rekha correctly said, if king goes up, we are also going to have bishop d6 is definitely doable too, but right now we have checkmate in 5 move. Do you guys want to try and find that? started bishop d6 you are again going to be able to find checkmate just a little bit longer all right so what about so after take uh opponents realize that okay i'm getting in a, some hot waters or hot pickles i guess 
So let's not take that and he just ran away with the king. Now what do we do? I definitely do like bishop c5. Bishop c2 also another cool idea, but yes, bishop c5 is what Magnus played. He's kind of preparing for all kind of nasty discovery checks. I'm quoting my brother, and yes, um, that is what they're going for. So now white's got to figure out. In the game, white went for knight a4 to try and deal with these. But what if king g3? What if he just like, I'm gonna pack my bags and leave? Wait, there was a song like that that I recently, recently listened to. Pack your bags and leave. Who said, whose song was that? Hmm. Anyways. Yeah, so king g3, where do we go now? Ooh, this is a nasty check. So basically right now there's checkmate in three moves. It's quite actually yes that's the best way to explain it it's a nasty checkmate knight h5 is also nasty but it's four move checkmates can you see it in three moves knight h5 would work king gotta go to f2 you're gonna move this guy over here and that should be it but also also knight e2 is pretty cool and then knight h5 and that'll be it all right cool okay so knight g3 king g3 doesn't work what about knight a4 i'm whoa i'm going after this guy so what should we do should we just go for the plan that we already had or we could just come and defend this guy i think that's also good But yeah, bishop c2 makes a little bit more uh, boily actually, like it's boiling blood. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that was dark. Yeah, I like this bishop c2. Mm, yeah, you start to just go at it with the queen and in the game white was just like, you know what, I'm done with this and he just took on c5. However, uh, you can't really do anything with your queen. If you're trying to run with the queen, you are going to just lose this guy. And future issues for the queen as well. So there's not much uh, hope of trying to keep this queen on board anyways. So might as well just get yourself into this position. Alright, so now what? So now we know black has clear advantage. Now it's just a matter of how is going, how he's going to use it. Material wise, white has a bishop, a rook, and a pawn in exchange for the queen. So if you look at it from like just purely material wise, white's fine, right? But uh, advantage wise, and the king wise, and objectively, and logically, and eek, everything except for Matt. Uh, white's pretty um, messed up. So, how do we continue that? How do we put white in even more pickle? I kind of want pickle. I have olives.
just continue this. We don't want to lose this knight. We want to keep our pieces active. We're going to get this rook coming in. I don't really like this pin. So let's just... One thing that I've realized that's kind of more psychological part of this um, chess aspect is that yes, you want to be able to uh, keep your cool and you want to be able to, you know, actually actively attack but now that the, the dynamic of the position has changed that cool two bishops that you had as black you don't really have them anymore so the but you have like you exchanged your advantage you uh t like transferred your advantage you had the different type of advantage now your advantage is more uh material wise and you have an extra queen that you gotta try and use so one thing that i would strongly recommend is given the choice Try to take a, like a, a minute break. Just get up, take a quick walk, think of a song, drink water, whatever, come back, and then start thinking. Well, actually, if it's an online tournament, you can't exactly do that, but you get my points. Like, in a perfect world, if this is a, the game that you're playing, just um, make sure to not ignore the, 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 the differences that the position has right now than it had like five moves ago. So. And uh, this is quite funny because this is just move 15 and white is already pretty roughed up. Yes, Matty, I kind of, yeah, that was kind of the, the, the idea to see um, how much my Persian viewers would like that. <laughs> yeah, so let's go. Queen e7. Queen e7 might not be the strongest one. You might have like some cool knight g4s, blah, blah, but you don't need that. Now it's about kind of chilling, relaxing, and figuring out how to continue. All right, so first of all, let's not get pinned. Let's go attack that guy. Uh, in the game, white played b4. White's trying to still be active, but now what do we do? He still wants to eat this. I don't necessarily want to have to move it, but if I do, that's also okay, because I can start building up on here. Uh-oh. Says something went wrong. Oh no. Am I still here? Because... Okay, I am still here. My tablet went cuckoo bananas for a second. Alright, we are good. Oof. Yeah, yep, just rookie 8. Start to build on threads. And if you take it, oh, that will be fun, checkmate. And I could make T faster. But in the game, white just went for bishop d3, trying to still develop, check, you, you move it. Now what do we do? Here there is another like cool sacrificial idea, but not necessarily the most humane one. Uh, so I'm gonna leave it up to you. Honestly, I think b6 could also work, but anything cool. Oh, maybe I want to, I think I did mean to say human. Maybe I should say hue woman instead of human. <laughs> no, I like this. Uh, g5, yep, g5 is a cool idea, and knight g4 is even better. I think the, those two, like that idea is just so just nasty honestly because knight g4 like you have this extra material so I to me when you have like an extra like material and extra um, like that mini advantage even if you still uh, try to continue to push and sacrifice to me that's such a cute thing not not many people do it honestly so knight g4 if take check if here boom boom bam and you eat that that would be a cool thing too so uh, if now b6 
B6 was in the game, nothing wrong with that. He, uh, Suri went for knight e4, boom boom, and c5. Magnus is taking a very strategic approach, he's not trying to uh, make the game messy, he's just, he has a cool outpost, he's using that, he has a very active queen using that. Why not? Take and now, I gotta ask, black to move, what to do? Do we wanna just take it back or do we wanna make it even more spicy? Let's eat this guy. Yep, the last sacrifice. Take and boom, check. And if knight goes to f3, we could simply make this work and wherever you go, uh, I'll follow. I'll eat the other one. You go over here, I'll eat the other one. You go over there, I'll eat the other one. Yeah, this is such a cool ge geography, um, geometry problem. Yeah. Alright, so king e1, now what? Now let's eat this one. King f2, now what do we do? So it's now queen to two pieces. So. Two rooks, sorry, not two pieces. Now what? Where do we go from here? I'll give you a little bit more background from this game. Uh, so this game was actually played in 2018 and it was in the Pro Chess League. So if you couldn't figure out where this game is from, that's perfectly fine because it wasn't in like a... It was, Pro Chess League is a very strong tournament, but uh, it's not like... It's not like... The, like uh, the, the Grand Chess Tour is not like that, so it's a little different formats, definitely. Yeah, Queen C2, King down, and where do we go now? This move I thought was just kind of brutal. So what do you do after Queen C2? What do you think? I think queen g2 is cool, but if you take, you have to deal with this takes too. How about... So that's kind of... I feel like that's coming up, but maybe let's first deal fix this and take this. Yeah, let's take this first. Then here, actually, white resigned, because you can't touch the knight, because that will be checkmate. And next move, white's gonna uh, have to deal with these stuff, and nobody wants to deal with that. Even if you try to be all cute, I'll just check you, and then I can just... Actually, I kind of want to do a nice C2 now. Also, I really want this. Like, there's so many things that I want. Or, or, or just this. And if you move the king, I'll eat over here. This is like plus six. White doesn't really have much to do. He can try to prolong it a little, but it's not going to change the result. So that's, yeah, I really like this game. Uh, this game was a lot of sacrifices from Magnus, and the opponent was just kind of helpless. Just, yeah, that was a very um, sad game. Yeah, so that is how you take an advantage from this like it king if you were not present here last week i suggest you go watch the last week's stream because i explained the concept of like it because it's lonely and naked that's the best kind of kink so um so i'm hoping to do like a cool mini series on different players so if you like this video make sure to like subscribe share all those fun stuff and now i'm gonna take a short break and go on twitch to analyze your games 
So in about 10 minutes or so, please be present in Twitch. We're going to be there for two hours. So if you see this video in an hour, we're still going to be there. Come by and give us your game. Make sure to have it on a Leeches format. We work on Leeches mainly now. Actually, I don't know what do we ever do in chess.com. But everything we do right now is on Leeches, basically. So pick a game from Leeches. Give me that cool Leeches. And yep, that's actually, yeah, no life. That's the lesson of today. The chess and psychology lesson for today was like it. And on that high note, I'm going to do the segment of Switch to Twitch. See you, everybody.